We're now in mid-May, so I should probably tell you what it was that I read in April. Stick around. Hello readers. In April, I read four books. Now I know that doesn't sound like too many, but if I can read four books in a month, I'm happy. And the first was a book that I read with the Booktube Chicks book club. So we did have a live discussion for it and I'll be sure to link that in the description below. And it was A Thorn by Intisar Kanani. This was a Goose Girl retelling and I haven't actually read the original Goose Girl story, which I believe was a grim fairy tale. Not 100% sure. And that's not a story that I've read before or that I was familiar with prior to reading Thorn. So unfortunately, I can't make too many comparisons. I don't know where she deviated from the original story and what kind of changes she made. It's about a princess who has this spell that's put on her and she ends up kind of swapping places with the goose girl. So obviously their experiences are going to be very different. You have royalty that's treated a certain way and then you have the goose girl, which is like a much lower class who's treated a certain way. She does have a talking horse in this one. It seems like in the original Goose Girl, I think, uh, you know, she just had the power to speak to animals. And I don't know if that was made super clear in this retelling. I, I thought it was just a relationship she had with the horse that was special. Mm, now I'm not sure. It's definitely written in this formal fairy tale kind of writing. And I think, uh, comparatively from the other things I've been reading. It was just a little bit difficult for me to get into, but I still really enjoyed the story. Obviously it's a fantasy. There was quite a bit of violence. I think in the beginning of the book, I had a hard time because the princess is abused by her mother and her brother. And I don't think you get a good sense of why that's the case. I don't think there's any like rational legitimate explanation for being abused that way or for being abused in any way so that aspect of it always felt kind of uncomfortable and petty but overall i did enjoy it and i would consider reading more from this author i gave it four stars and there were some parts that made me quite emotional enough to cry i had to pause the audiobook i was listening to the audiobook and reading the ebook that i got from the library but there was definitely a part that made me cry the second book i read was will my cat eat my eyeballs by caitlin dotty this is not at all what I was expecting it to be. One of the reasons that I added it to my Goodreads is probably because I saw somebody on my friends list had read it and rated it quite high. Uh, I should probably pay more attention to descriptions and things. But I think overall I like going into things blind. It just sucks when you're expecting something completely different. I thought this was a graphic novel. I thought it was a graphic novel about cats. That's not the case at all. Caitlin Dowdy is a mortician. And in this book, she's answering questions about death. These questions were sent to her by children, which makes them all the more interesting. But while I appreciated this, I listened to the audiobook and I did also read it. I may pick it up because it does have illustrations, but I definitely wouldn't call it a graphic novel. I really loved her candor. I loved that she didn't hold back. I loved that there are parts that were funny. And, you know, kids themselves don't hold back. So they were asking questions like, will my cat eat my eyeballs? <laughs> um, I wish I had some additional examples. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but I learned more about death than I ever really wanted to, but it, it was it was an experience and I, I enjoyed it and I would actually pick up more of her books. I think she has written more books in regards to her career and to death and how, you know, as humans, we experience death. And so this one was funny. And, you know, she tried to make death a little lighthearted. Some things were just like, wow, I've never stopped to think about that. Did I need to know that? I probably could have lived my whole life without knowing that. But it was still an interesting book. I gave it four stars on Goodreads and I would definitely recommend it to others. The third book I read was Yes, No, Maybe So by Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed. Jesus fucking Christ. She's doing a thing right now. I have no idea. I don't I Lumi, can you like not? I don't I don't understand what's happening right now. I don't know why she's being this way. Why are you being this way? This is a political YA romance and I absolutely loved it. I don't think the romance was like a huge focus. 
I would say the political aspect was maybe like 60 and the romance was kind of 40. This is told in alternating perspectives. Uh, the main male character is Jewish and the female character is Muslim. They were childhood friends that kind of drifted apart but they end up going canvassing together for a politician and so it does revolve a lot around politics. Um, through their canvassing they kind of get to see how she's treated um, as a Muslim versus how, versus how he is treated. So it talks a lot about that. Um, it does talk about racism. But what I absolutely loved about this was seeing a younger audience engage with politics in this way. And I just thought that was a great message. The teenagers canvassing were, I believe, old enough to vote. If not, they were like right right about to turn 18. But this book talks about kids even younger than that paying attention to politics, being aware, wanting to do the right thing, and kind of waiting because they are eventually going to turn 18. They are eventually going to um, vote hopefully and make decisions and I think it's such a timely book and it's needed right now because a lot of people are having political awakenings, we want to see change, and the children are the future. So they should know what's happening, they should be aware, and they shouldn't feel alienated because politics affect them too. This book also made me cry but I finished the book really hopeful and I haven't seen a ton of people talking about it so I'd love for more people to read it. I gave it five out of five stars. I think it's just a conversation that we need to be having now about politics. And the last book I read was The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver and this was a book that I was really looking forward to. As you may already know I read One Day in December so I was really looking forward to this book but was unfortunately really disappointed. I went in it expecting a whirlwind romance. <laughs> That did not happen at all. It was mostly a story about grief and I still appreciate Josie Silver's writing. I think she's a great writer. I think if I had known what the book was about going into it, like if I had known it was so heavily rooted in grief and that that was what it was about, I might have been able to prepare a little bit better. That being said, there were just some things that I wanted to to save the way I was feeling about it and they just didn't happen. The book itself was somewhat predictable but not even rewarding. Like what I wanted to happen happened but it didn't feel good. It was kind of anticlimactic. To give you a little bit more in regards to what this story is about, there is a girl. She is about to get married. She's going to celebrate her birthday with her fiance. I think it's her fiance. I can't remember if he had already proposed or not but they were supposed to get married. And on the way to the restaurant he he makes a stop to pick up his best friend who has become somewhat of a third wheel in their relationship. And so she's kind of flustered and upset about that. But anyway he goes to pick up his best friend and they end up getting into a car accident. His best friend survives he does not. So you know she's really struggling with this. They prescribe her some medication so that she can sleep. Initially she doesn't want to take it. Eventually she does and what ends up happening as a result of her taking this sleeping medication is that she starts to dream about her fiance and she basically starts living out a different life in her dreams with him. And so now she's kind of trying to escape her real life taking this medicine in not the best way and she is really just holding on to what could have been and so the majority of the book is her processing kind of what's going on in these two lives these two experiences that she's having um and and her just dealing with the grief of the loss. That may sound interesting to you. I think it kind of sounded interesting to me but as you start following her through that dream life with her fiance still alive it's just it was really boring. It was there was no real drama there. There was nothing really going on like it just he as her fiance was kind of like perfect at everything so I don't know it was just boring. Again I wouldn't go into this book thinking it was a romance because as far as it being a romance I think it completely fell flat and it just wasn't it wasn't exciting. There was no real swoon worthy moments. There was just like it really wasn't about that at all. It was just about 
the main character moving through her grief. I gave it two stars on Goodreads but I am still open to reading more of Josie Silver's work. Like I said I think she's a great writer. Uh, this story just wasn't what I thought it was. So what did you read in April? Please let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.